you, Adam. And thank you everyone for joining. I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm excited that language models are finally making it into production. Um, this, let me jump into a little bit about me before I dive into the material. Um, before this, uh, I co-founded MLPerf, which is a standard uh, organization that helps uh, companies um, get the best possible performance in um, training deep learning models, including language models. Um, before that, I built a research team in Baidu Research, the Silicon Valley AI lab, where we invented language models. We invented scaling models, uh, scaling laws for language models, and had many um, of the people from that lab went on to build um, the language models that we know and love today, including GPT-4, including Claude, to including um, Meta's uh, Llama and including Megatron um, at NVIDIA. So I'm so happy that we're finally at the point where uh, this stuff is like out in production and everybody is using it. Um, and then a little bit before that, I used to be an architect on CUDA where I helped build the first versions of CUDA. Um, so yeah, ha super happy to be here. And I want to talk about a really specific uh, technology for um, language models, which is called fine tuning. Uh, fine tuning is the technology that takes us from research projects like GPT-3 um, into chat GPT or from GPT-3 into um, GitHub Copilot. So it allows the language model to learn a new interface and also to understand um, specific data uh, that's important to, to solve a particular use case, like to learn how to write code. Um, so here I want to talk about how we're doing um, fine tuning at Lomini. And I want to uh, see if I can get through the entire process um, in just a few minutes. So let's let's dive into it. Okay, so I'm going to go to presenter mode, and I hope that everybody can still um, see me here. All right, so at Lom and I, we're building um, an enterprise platform for fine tuning. Just make it really easy for every single company to do fine tuning. Um, in this example, we're going to look at what it takes to fine tune Llama to uh, the 13 billion parameter model, um, so that it understands uh, legal cases, so that it can actually understand the material um, inside of. Um, a particular legal case that it's never seen before. Um, so the base model, Llama2, has no knowledge about these cases. These are new cases, uh, or imagine the proprietary data that um, the base model was not trained on. And remember that most of these models were trained on the internet. So they were trained by scanning um, the common crawl or the pile or a data set like that of information that you can readily find on the internet. But not all data is in there. So hopefully my video works. Okay, so this is what it looks like if you just ask Llama to some questions about these cases. In Bell versus Turner, did the appeals court, um, like a question about the appeals court. And most of the time, the model will correctly say, that case doesn't exist. I've never seen that before. Right? And so there's no case such as Cruz, Pat, uh, Packer versus Chertoff, not aware of any legal case. So completely makes sense. Uh, it wasn't um, any information that the model was trained on. So of course, it won't know um, how to answer these questions. But you have a lot of data. Um, so if you're an enterprise, you've been accumulating data in a data lake or a data warehouse for the entire history of your company, and you might have petabytes of data. And the language model knows nothing about that. So let's look at an example. This is an open example, so you can reproduce it. Um, where we're training on this uh, Harvard Law cold case uh, data set, and we're going to inject this information into the language model so that the language model can now understand and answer questions um, about this data set. And this is the raw data. So you can just scroll through this. This is just uh, the core case, um, just directly uh, as a string exported um, into a giant CSV file. Um, so you can see here, you might have, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of core cases in a data set like this. So it's a really um, big data set. And it's just strings. So there's no post processing that you need to do on this. It's just a giant string. Okay, so now the next step, this is where the magic actually happens. So um, here, we're essentially going to use the Lomini docs to QA interface. So you can see on the right-hand side there, from Lomini import docs to QA, we're going to create um, essentially two models using prompt engineering. So this is going to create two models that are going to pretend that they're paralegals um, graduated from Harvard Law School. And they're here to um, ask detailed questions about these documents and answer detailed questions about these documents. So you can kind of conceptually think of this as um, having the language model read through the entire data set and then generate data in the format that we want. So we want this to be a question answer model. We need to generate data that are questions and answers. Um, so we have two language models here. One is generating 
um, questions, and then the other one is answering those questions. And as the input to those language models, they're actually reading through these documents. So this is a big computational task. We're kind of having expert language models read through all of this court case information uh, to generate a data set. So that finally generates, you know, thousands, potentially tens of thousands. You know, you can generate an arbitrary amount of data um, about uh, these um, these court cases. And now finally, we're going to feed that into a language model for fine tuning. So the last line, line 16 right there is going to um, kick off a fine tuning job. We're going to take the same model, um, Llama 2, 13 billion, and fine tune it on all of that data that we just generated. Okay. Uh, so you can also connect to um, other places where your data might come from. In that example, I was loading it from a CSV file. So we can also connect uh, to a Databricks data lake. Um, we can also um, connect to Snowflake and you can pull data out of a warehouse. Okay, so there are lots of ways of getting data into this. Um, and these are examples of some of the questions and answers that are generated by running the language model over um, the data. So we generate a lot of data there. Um, all right, so then we run it. Um, when you call train, it immediately submits it to the system. So you immediately get a model that comes up um, and starts fine tuning. We use optimizations. Um, like retrieval and like heft um, to make sure that fine tuning uh, is done efficiently and has all the right context. Okay, so this is what happens. The model finishes in about 15 minutes. Okay, so let's see how it performs. So remember, this was the original llama. So it, it answers these questions like, oh, there is no such case. Um, but what happens for the fine tune model? What would you like to know? Um, what was the issue regarding the custodian's claim in McGrath versus Manufacturers Trust? And so um, the issue was whether the custo custodian was entitled to interest on the amount owed by the bank. So it actually understands um, the content in the court cases now and can answer questions, very specific factual questions about um, the information that's, uh, that's in the data set. So we've essentially um, downloaded this information into the language model. All right. Um, we have a number of other examples here that I'm going to skip in the interest of time, but um, let me get to the main point. If you want to learn more about the technology underlying this and how it works, I'd encourage you to take our short course um, co-hosted with Deep Learning AI and Coursera on fine-tuning large language models. This explains how fine-tuning works and it has several practical examples you can play with. And we have a hosted platform that's out right now. Go to lamini.ai. Um, you can sign up, you can read our docs, you can run exactly the same application. So um, I think I'm about at time, so I'm going to stop here and yeah, just excited to see what, what everyone builds with this. Thank you very much, Greg. It must be wild to just to see right from the beginning of LLMs to where they are today. Uh, and it's, it's, how do you feel about this? I mean, this is, this is crazy. We're writing scaling laws, so they sucked, you know, in 2015. They could do like spell check. So now you've got like GPT-4. So the thing I'm really excited about is 2025 and 2030 because they're going to keep writing scaling laws. They're going to keep getting better. So this is really just the beginning. Thank you very much, Greg. Yeah.